Changing Tides. Mm -hmm. So the short film that you wrote, you directed, and I, as I understand, it's a very, very personal story for you. Yes, it's not a commentary on how people become addicted. It's a commentary on the lives of an addict. Have you have your perspective on, on everything uh, changed even a little bit after you wrote it, after you kind yeah. of, yeah? Definitely. I, um, I, for many years, so you carry a lot of shame when you're um, a child or a partner or, or whatever, parent of a um, mm -hmm. sibling, of someone with addiction. Um, and as a child, you carry a lot of uncertainty of, was it me? Was it my fault? Mm. Was I not good enough? Um, and then, and that takes a long time to go. Um, and then once that happened, after that, you, you get to this whole like anger part as well, where it's you really, you know, why didn't you love me enough to stop? And I think from doing this, I feel such a sense of calm about it now. I feel so like I, he was just a flawed man. He was mm. just a very troubled, depressed man. He didn't, you know, it's, it's a mental condition. It's not, he wasn't, he wasn't doing it to hurt me or anyone else. You know, and we're all so just a fragment away from that happening ourselves. I think it's made me a lot more understanding. You know, if something massive could happen in your life, a tragedy, and, and it could happen the same, you know, it doesn't have to be, and any class, any amount of money, this, this can happen because you don't become an addict because you're happy. You, you, you do it because you're covering up something. And then, you know, and then once you have covered that up, then there's all this shame associated with what you've done to cover it up to then stop. You've got to address all of that. So I think anyone who, who finds that strength is remarkable and admirable, and, but there is hope in that and people can do it. And I think that's where I, that's definitely what's helped now. I think it's made me and my family have more dialogue about it. And also finding the Nakoa, because you don't know, it's such a private thing, because it happens in behind closed doors and no one talks about it, that you think that your situation is so unique to you. And I've met, I, with Nakoa, we've been in um, the Houses of Parliament lobbying the government. And I've heard all of these fantastic people sharing their story on stage politicians, speakers, influencers, sports people. And we're all from entirely different backgrounds and our experiences are so similar. Mm. And it makes me, oh, it gets me a bit teary even thinking about it. Like the, the community that I found in Nakoa uh, and this ability that people have felt that they could trust in me and tell me their stories is something um, that I feel, it, it can be quite overwhelming sometimes, um, but it's also, it makes me feel like something good has come from all of this, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, so I'm really, I'm really glad that I did it. Um, I'm really glad that it doesn't just speak for me. Is there anything that you would want to say for people? First of all, maybe someone who's actually struggling with the uh, addiction themselves or to people who are close to someone, like what would you say? Don't suffer in silence. I think that the, the worst, absolute worst thing is the shame that's associated with it, which makes it, it pushes it further underground. And when it's for both parties, um, and what that does is it makes both parties spiral. Like, you know, I've definitely not been 100% um, <laughs> good all the time uh, because, you know, it makes you question yourself, your life, your worth. And the same with the person who's an addict, you know, there is help out there. There is other people who've been in this situation who they're so willing to listen and they're so willing to help in any way they can. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't want to share your story, go and, and if you don't want to go to a meeting, you don't want to go to a group, there are, just listen to podcasts. Like Nakoa, for example, has a message wall. And they have a free helpline as well that you can phone up. It says children alcoholics, and obviously it's encouraged for children to phone, but you're a child until you die, right? You can phone up as an adult as well. Especially most of them. <laughs> <laughs> but you can, you know, and that, that's one thing that they actively support, but they also have this message board too. And um, so you can read other people's stories. 
there's a lot of people who talk about this now. The same in the in the uh, addiction space. Mm -hmm. There's so many people who online share their version of that, share their story, share what they went through. Mm -hmm. And that to me is also going back to a conversation we had before about the power of like arts and why it's so important is because if you can see yourself or your story in someone else that you thought that you're ashamed of or you're afraid of or you're secret, it can be so powerful mm. because it can be, you don't have to share it, but you can understand that you're not alone. And that's so important. You're not alone. Sort, seek people out, find people talk if you can, or just watch and listen. I think it's so, so important. I'm guessing, well, I don't know, but I'm, I'm guessing, it seems like for people who are suffering from addiction, very often the one of the, one of the big problems is to understand that it's like actually a problem. Uh, yeah. When do you realize it's harmful and how to kind of come to this? Well, I think that's, yeah, I think it's when it's affecting others is when it's harmful. That's when it becomes harmful. There's, you know, there is a difference to uh, going out and drinking and having fun and then going out and drinking and now not being able to go to work, not performing as well, yeah. forgetting your kid's birthday, not washing up, not washing, not cleaning. Mm -hmm. That's a different, you know, they're, they're two different worlds. And I think once it starts to slip into the neglect of oneself or, or of others, then that's when it starts to become a problem. But the thing is, is that you're the only person who can see that. You're the only person who can want to change. You mm -hmm. can't have, and that's what's hard for the people around you, um, because the other people want you to change so much, but they cannot help you. They cannot, there's nothing that they can do. And so that's why the other people, th there's other groups as well, like there's Al-Anon, which is, um, it's like the AA, but it's for the people, that are, um, uh, the family of an alcoholic or, or the narcotic drugs. Um, because for them, it, they're always wanting the change and they're seeing the, the person, it's like they, they become a shell of who they form, form a were, but and, and you, you'll argue with them, you'll scream at them, you'll want validation, but they have to want the change. They have to want it. And I think, so that's the hardest point. If they don't, my dad never did. Some people don't, you know. Um, but then therefore, if we'd have known that there was other services for the rest of us, then that might have helped the rest of us. And I might never have taken all those years out of acting, who knows. Mm. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I think it's, if, if, if you yourself thinks that there is a problem, then you know you go and see, go and sort help. If you are affected by somebody else's problem, then then you do that for you. You're doing it for you, um, and you, they can teach you ways of communicating and trying to, but you can never change anyone. Mm -hmm. That's, that's true. the truth. It's true. Uh, for someone who suffered from minor addiction to nicotine, which mm -hmm. is not the same, but I mean, like, and I started stupidly. I started smoking when I was thirty. Before wow. 30, I never smoked before, and then like I, I smoked, like started smoking stupidly when I was 30, and I just basically I just quit this January, so like 10 years I was smoking wow. for 10 years, and then this January mostly because well I don't have money now for smoking, especially in the UK, yeah. <laughs> it's extremely expensive. But again, like I knew that I wanted to quit. Exactly. It wasn't like you know. At some point, like I, the, because I tried to quit some time ago, and I even quit successfully for seven months. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Still, still successfully. Yeah. But I was like, my girlfriend, she was like, she didn't like me smoking. And I was like, but I kind of, I still wanted, I was craving, you know, for a cigarette for a long, long time, and then I started smoking again. But this time, it feels very different because I, I just stopped because I didn't want to do it anymore. But yeah. that's that's the main thing. I think you have to want. Dude. It has to be you, but you have to, but it, there was, again, it's bit like we've been talking about everything, it formulates in your brain for ages first. It's not just a, I'm going to stop. We can't do it that way. And that's also like in the film, uh, that's what it tries to show because it's another side of the film that, that I want to expose that isn't really talked about. And it is when you're at, when you're that far gone in alcoholism, you can't just stop. Yeah. Um, and it's already like a physical yeah because there's five stages of addiction and when you're in the ad addicted stage your body needs it you, but you can't you cannot so there's a point where he tries to stop and um and then he has psychosis and so that's another thing that uh, and that scene is actually almost verbatim what my dad said about me when i was in london um 
And that's another thing that's not not talked about is alcoholic psychosis. When you are that bad, because your liver is no longer functioning, you're that close now to death. It's, you're, you're close to multi-organ failure. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's something that I don't think is ever, I don't think I've ever seen it anywhere in the film before. So it is also happy. <laughs> it's also hope in the film as well. But I wanted to show the raw reality of the situation, yeah. you know, because it is stark when it gets that, like, don't get that bad, essentially, you know, if you can.